Ciao everybody, in this uh, Podio Advanced Training I just want to highlight the differences between the standard list or standard categories and the reference field allowing to have also a uh, list of items but reference from another app. In the standard form where you use the category field like here then that allows the user to select one or multiple of these buttons. That's very suitable when you want to suggest all the different values that the user can select. And it's also very suitable when you have a limited number of values. If this list is very long, like in the case of list of countries or languages with many, many possibilities, this is not suitable uh, because it would be much too long and taking too much of the real estate screen. So the alternative then is to use a reference. That's what we have done into the team member app I'm just going to show it, maybe I open one item. Here I have a standard category field with selected values. And here I have a reference field, which allows me to select from a different app, using add and remove, different languages. And now here I can type Zulu and select this strange language, or any other one like, I don't know, Island doesn't exist. Uh, but finish probably exist. So that's very useful because now I have a long list of possibilities and including very strange languages. So <laughs> I have a long list here I can choose from, but the user doesn't know the list. You see here, he is seeing only the top 10 ones, actually sorted anti alphabetically in this example. So he doesn't know that German exists. So if he wants to type Deutsch, uh, that doesn't work. There is no Deutsch value. So he has to know that it's German. He has to find the right category. So that's a big difference is that here the values are not proposed, not uh, suggested. So I have to guess and know which ones to type. But it takes a very li little space. Now I have only two lines here to show uh, these two languages out of a list which is called containing 100. So that's the first value here is that I can select languages from a long list without needing to show all the options. The drawback is that I don't know all the options. The second value of using a reference field is that I can add, uh, sorry, I'm scrolling too fast. I can add a new item. So if my language very specific is not existing in the list, I can just create a new language and I call it test language. Save this. I'm back in my list and my language test language has been added and will be available for everybody else. Deleting this for the moment. So that's the second value of a reference field is that you can add, allow the user to define their own values. That's also the drawback. Sometimes you don't want them to define uh, their own values, but to strictly force them to choose from existing values, like for example, English and not English British, English Australian or English American. I just want them to select English. That's enough for me. So it has pros and cons. So where is this reference list coming from? You know this category field, that's very simple. Let me just show you one additional thing first about the category field is that it can be displayed in three different ways. The inline that you have just seen on the screen as a list, which is going to show exactly the same thing, but this time all the possibilities one below the other I personally don't like this at all uh, because it takes a lot of space for not providing any more value. Uh, so I would not use the list setting, except that you can sort manually this uh, list in the order which suits you, like alphabetically or by order of importance, and then you would see them as a column, making it a little bit easier to identify than a whole pack of items. But again, it takes a lot of space on the screen, so then the best choice would be a drop-down list. And with drop-down list, that's a very nice way because you don't take a lot of screen space. You only have here a drop-down item. But the drawback is that you can select only one item. These are not multi-value drop-downs. So when you have only one value to select, that's a wonderful alternative mixing this concept of showing all the possible values I can select from without taking the whole space of having multiple lines of hundreds of buttons when it's a long list. Still, a long drop-down list of 100 values is not so digestible and I cannot type the first letters so easily to jump to it. It doesn't filter. If I type S, it will jump to the first S in the list. 
uh, but they may not be in order alphabetically first. And second, it doesn't filter. So I still see the 100 others, even if I jump to the first sponsor in this example. Whereas with the reference field, if I type here S, I'm going to filter my list. So I see there is no language starting by S, but if I type A, also none. Okay, so G, and I have to type two letters at least. So G, E, and it's filtering. Uh, now I know that the whole list contains only German, uh, which is starting with G, E. So this is additional value, but you see again the difference, pros and cons is in both, in both sides. I'm just going to modify again my list here of Tim Circle and make it appear as the classical inline that we like, where we can select multiple choices. If I select multiple choices, then you see that the drop-down list is not available anymore, as we said, the drop-down is only for single value. So now what about this reference field? How, how does it work? I just added this relationship field to make a link between this form, the team members, with a language form, which would be somewhere else, a language app. Actually, I created a link by saying, I'm choosing which app this is going to be a relationship to or with. I can very nicely filter here and select an app which is existing. Languages was already existing, so it's already selected here. I make the whole example from scratch. So I select languages. It's searching all the apps called Lang something in all the different workspace I'm member of. It found in this workspace called metadata, where I'm storing separately from the team space values which can be reused across different apps and actually across different workspaces. So if I have different workspaces using languages, I will not have to re-enter the whole list again and again. That's another additional value of a reference field or relationship concept, is that now my list are maintained in one central place in this workspace called metadata and can be reused in multiple apps of multiple other workspaces. I created this link and now it's done. And so now when I'm going to uh, type here, uh, trying to select a, a, a language from this reference, I've lost it here and I can add remove then it's going to look up to make a search in this other database, which is called metadata. Uh, uh, it's called languages. The app is called languages and stored into the metadata workspace. And so now I can find my test language that I put before. Let's say I want to delete now this test language. Actually, what I want to do is to open this database. Where is this app here? We said it is in metadata. I can simply click on the link here, metadata, or even directly on English. And that will open now this Podio workspace called metadata, where I'm storing my different list of categories, list of values for languages or countries or currencies or uh, roles or uh, skills, anything I want to store remotely uh, stored here. So I have my app languages into which I have my list of languages here. And for each of the language, then I can modify and and do anything. For example, I want to remove my test language. I'm just going to do a search for test. I find my test language. I don't want this anymore. Action, delete, and it's done. So the key advantage of storing this list remotely, one, uh, we discussed about the visual interface for the user and the selection and the filtering. Two, I can manage in one place, one single list, which is reusable over different apps, which can be distributed over different workspaces. Three, the user can add themselves some new values, which may be a drawback in some cases. I would address the drawback by having a workflow triggered. Every time there is a new value added, I would get a notification so I could review this new value and ensure the consistency. And if I detect, for example, English American and English British, I would manually update this and uh, clean up to have only English in this case. Uh, four, uh, this list can now be sorted and I can find also, when I open each of the elements, how many other elements are related to this item. So here I see we have two team members in the different workspace, actually, a workspace called team space, uh, two members which have been selected this value English. 
and so I can have like my statistics and directly how many times this value is used so I can see in this example how many people uh, have been selecting which language uh, this additional information that we put so that's another advantage is that instead of just a flat list with languages I have now a sheet a form de describing this language so I can have some information like the statistics here or any other comment and valuable information around this value so that's a very strong advantage also to decentralize the management of this metadata finally and possibly the most important is the ability now to change these values right from this uh, metadata definition if I want to change English because that's not my proper uh, terminology then I could say English US Australian or English British I just update this and this is going now to update my different contacts so I can jump here to myself who was defining this language and you see the language has been updated here because this is just a reference so this is not contained actually inside Yannick this is just a link to the name of this language which has been updated so you have 200 people using this language in 20 different apps throughout three workspaces everywhere it's updated which is not the case when I want to change this list if I want to rename this then it's going to break uh, if it's just a little rename that works but if I want to add new elements or delete this one and add a new one that that's going to break everything so keeping the relationship is also very strong there is a possibility when you want to change that everywhere then you can always export the whole list of members into Excel that's a separate uh, video and then update in Excel and then re-import the new values but that's a very cumbersome uh, process the final advantage having external reference like here is that instead of just the name English uh, here I can have English and some of the fields which describe this language in my example I'm describing some of my statistics and we see where it comes from if I want to change this display and to display only the language and not this information I just go into this uh, this app which describe languages here and I can define the way it's going to be displayed you do that through the range here and you say layout options there are two ways to display this languages in this example one is the badge layout so instead of having a list layout like here kind of an Excel list you can have this badges and then you describe which items you want to show on the badges the other part is when uh, another app is referencing this app which is our case a person is referencing a language from this app and then we can define what we want to display when it's reference the language and the statistics now I'm going to say no statistics this takes a lot of space for nothing save now I go back to the person there and you see now I only have the language it still takes a little bit more space than such a list so again you have more flexibility uh, but it takes uh, double space at least if not triple space or four times the space actually with the add button compared to a flat list like this so the lesson is if we want to have only few values then such a list is easier people know what to click they know ex exhaustively all the options but they can't add anything if they need to add something else I would suggest to use a button other and then we need another field called if other please specify which takes exactly the same place than this and it's not really manageable now I have two fields so the views are not going to build properly I would have to add this new value Greek here and remove now this uh, Greek text here so it requires a lot of manual management so let's say this other is not a very good option it's kind of an exceptional case uh, when we want to track only the main languages and the other languages we don't really care of it's just for info that would work uh, if not then better to use a reference with something outside like here and we can decide what we want to, to display here so again I just show you how I'm changing the display here I go in my metadata in the language app the range I decide layout options 
and when the, uh, this app language is referenced from somewhere else, I want that it is displayed with these different statistics. Here it is. Okay, that's all for, for today. And uh, that allows me to uh, I hope this was summarizing, sorry, the concept between external reference and reference into one single uh, workspace. When you look at my workspaces now, I have my metadata where I'm storing these different values shared across the different spaces. That's all for today, folks. Thanks.